everybody welcome back to another video if you haven't gotten a chance to subscribe to our channel please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages for updates and daily photos so for today's video I wanted to kind of go over our Woma Python enclosure as well as the enclosures we have for our red tail boa and our emerald tree boa and kind of critique what I like and what I maybe don't like maybe want to change about the current enclosure setup if you haven't seen our other videos on our setups for all of those three particular snakes, I will leave them in the description below. But yeah, I wanted to go over the pros and cons and things that I like and maybe don't like about our current enclosure setup because after I did those enclosure setups, um, there are some things that I don't particularly like and I think I'm going to be changing here pretty soon. But before we jump into this video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Atypical Origins Exotics. I won this free t-shirt on a giveaway that they did a little while back, so I wanted to give them a shout out in this video. So let's go inside and check out our enclosures and see what I like and don't like about them. <laughs> He's distracting me while I'm trying to film. Are you enjoying your snack? Yeah? yeah? All right, here is Miss Nebulous Cage. She is in an 18 by 24 by 36 Exoterra. So, first off with her cage, I really want to upgrade her to the 18 by 36 by 36. So it's a little bit bigger for her. Um, so she can have a little bit more space to move back and forth. And I want to change her heating on top. So that'll be coming in the near future. But let's get her cage opened up. There's Miss Nebula sleeping. For the most part, I like the way her cage is set up. We had switched um, to the cocoa block with a little bit of sphagnum moss on top for the humidity. And then we added the plant to hold the humidity a little bit better. Now, this does work a little bit better than her last setup, but it still is not perfect. So for Miss nebulous cage i would definitely like to do a more bioactive setup i've said this in my other videos but i would like to add more natural real live plants to her enclosure to keep that humidity and that natural realistic look i also want to add uh, one of those monsoons um, and do it to where it's hooked to a humidity gauge. So that way it'll turn on when the humidity gets too low. That way I do not have to spray it down every day like I currently do in order to add that moisture back in to keep the humidity up. Uh, the humidity for Miss Nebula is a big deal because she comes from the rainforest. And so without that high humidity, then she ends up with stuck shed like she did with her previous owner. She has not shed again with us, but I am trying to maintain that humidity. So when she does shed again, that it will be a good and full one. She has a lot of stuck shed still that I try to pick off here and there, but I try not to mess with her too much. She is a little temperamental and doesn't like it but I still try to pick up, pick off as much as possible. So those are some things that I do like and dislike and want to improve with her enclosure setup. All right, so I already went and pulled out Miss Tigress's cage. She is our baby Walma Python. I did a setup video for this, so I'm gonna get this opened up and show you what I like and don't like about her enclosure. And we have our nifty uh, snake hook to get her out too. All right, so this is her, her current enclosure. If you did not see the setup video for this, I mixed Eco Earth with uh, Exoterra Natural Sand. Now, for the future, I think I'm going to switch this up. Uh, this substrate, it has worked great. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it, but I do find that the sand gets into literally everything. And for maintenance, because I do have a large collection, uh, that is just, it, it's bothersome to me. I, it's, it's a pain in the ass, to say the least. Um, it gets all in her water. I just recently changed her water, so there's not a whole lot of sand in there yet, but there will be because she slithers over the top of it, and it's just a pain. Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> What's up, girly? Hi. All right, well, she was coming out anyway, so I just took her out. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace her current substrate with a coconut husk, like Reptichip, what we use for our ball pythons. Um, she does come from a, a drier climate, and so I just won't keep it wet like I do the ball pythons or even nebula, I won't wet it down every day. I'll probably give it a light mist once a week to keep a little bit of humidity in her cage. But overall it stays pretty dry, so she should be fine with it. I currently switched out her humidity box um, and I put Reptichip in there as well. We did have Spragna moss, but for some reason, the Spragna moss kept developing mold. We've never had this issue with the Spragna moss in the humidity boxes, but it started doing it in her enclosure, so I switched that out with the Reptichip and it seems to be doing fine. So I think I'm just gonna switch over the entire enclosure to Reptichip the next time we do a full enclosure clean. This pretty girl is trying to go back now. All right, go back in there. There you go. Look at those beautiful side pattern. Oh my gosh. See, she loves exploring her enclosure. I'm just gonna change the substrate out to keep it a little more clean. But see, currently she has the Repta chip in there as like a little humidity hide. So I'm just gonna switch that over completely. Let's close this back up. But yeah, so that is the one thing that I really don't like about her enclosure. I'm gonna be switching the substrate back. Like I said, this substrate has been fine, but for the sake of cleaning with a large collection, I'm going to switch back over to the coconut husk. Now I have not had any problems with her ingesting it. If you've seen some of our feeding videos, uh, we feed usually on top of the hide box or on top of here, and I usually watch her eat, so we don't, we don't have any issues with her ingesting substrate. You are so beautiful. You ready to go back now? Okay, and last but not least, we have Miss Pepper's enclosure that I had switched over. The only thing I pretty much did was I switched her to a larger tub, which is fine, but I did switch up her substrate a little bit, which is something I'm definitely gonna be changing, uh, just like Tigress's after the first month when I do a complete change. All right, so here's Miss Peppy's enclosure. We didn't change too much. She loves to hide in her substrate. Her body is curled all the way underneath here. Let's see, see, look, it's all the way underneath there. So her substrate, I mixed Eco Earth with the coconut husk. Now, I really like the coconut husk for all of our reptiles because you can keep it wet, you can keep it dry, you can pretty much keep it how you want and it works great. The problem that I have with the Eco Earth is it gets really moist um, down in these corners and it does create mold and I don't like that. It, it, it does not create a good environment for the snake. So when I do her complete enclosure change. I am going to be taking away the Eco Earth and only doing the coconut husks. Um, this is uh, the cocoa blocks. So I'll either be using the cocoa blocks again or the Repta chip. But see her water dish just from going over it one time it gets that Eco Earth all in there. And I'm just not a fan of loose substrate now after a little bit of experience. I'm going to be sticking solely with the coconut husk I think for all of our uh, snakes for now. I'm gonna take you out, Miss Peppy. Miss Peppy just had a nice full shed. This is our curious Miss Peppy. Beautiful red tail. <laughs> oh, she always loves the camera. So another thing that I wanna be adding to her cage real soon is probably a lot of climbing things and a lot more clutter. Uh, she, in my opinion, does not have enough to climb on. She loves hiding in her hides and underneath the substrate, but I wanna give her more opportunities to climb. So other than the substrate change, I am definitely gonna be offering her a lot more opportunities to climb. In the wild, they are semi-arboreal, so they climb as well as are on the ground underneath the leaf litter. So, as I've said in previous videos, for our pets, um, like her and Tigress and Miss Nebula, um, I want to provide a more realistic environment. I just think it looks nice for display, too. It's good for them, it's good for you, it looks nice. 
Like, it won't focus when you're that close. <laughs> oh, she's being a stinker. And then in here in the near future, Miss Peppy has been doing a lot of growing. She has been shedding every three to four weeks just on her regular once a week meal. So she'll probably be getting an exoterra here very, very soon. I've been looking at the 18 by 36 by 24 for her. So that is probably the enclosure that she's gonna be getting here probably before Christmas. So look out for that video because I think when we do her enclosure setup next time, she will be getting a bioactive. So that'll be a really cool video to watch. And she is so active. You gonna come say hi? Yeah, big make. And you need Wawa. Okay. Oh, the challenges of trying to do videos with little people. <laughs> so those are some of the things I really do like about her enclosure and things I definitely want to upgrade for the future. She is going to be a big, beautiful snake, so we want to give her the best enclosure possible. And it just looks really nice in our living room. She is awesome. She was our very first snake to our household, not in our lives, just to our, our current household. Um, my husband had one of these growing up. I never had snakes growing up. I actually had bearded dragons and then we had a water monitor uh, before we had kids. But he really wanted a snake and she was our first one. And as soon as we got her, I was sold. So snakes are an awesome, awesome reptile to own. Back when I had my water monitor, I spent a lot of time at one of our local pet shops that bred retics and berms and they had a various other reptiles. And so I used to actually go in there and handle a lot of the, the big retics and berms. And so I learned a lot about snakes. I just had never owned one. They're absolutely amazing. All right, well that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give it a like if you like the video. <laughs> There's Miss Peppy still exploring. We're gonna hang out for a little bit. So again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.